Good morning, folks. We're going to be doing things a bit differently today just to switch it up as the sun diving comet sneaks in there. The sun has been pretty calm. The tropical systems ramping up are not at land today. We've had no large earthquakes just yet, although that is expected in the coming two days after a four-day absence at larger magnitudes. There have been no flashes, no solar flares, no filament eruptions, and in fact, the intensified solar wind still enduring for a fourth day appears to be trying to make up for all of it driving almost a full week now of geomagnetic storm conditions, luckily at low levels. The solar wind is likely to remain intense when the next coronal hole arrives, but first we'll take the Alphan waves and IMF-driven lithospheric instability. It's an earthquake watch. The thing I want you to focus on today is this. One of the most adorable, diminutive penguin species is in big trouble. We're going to take a very long, windy road here. Due to high ice conditions, adult penguins are having to travel too far to find scarce food. Sadly, this keeps happening to Antarctica. The year after global warming proof missions got stuck in record high ice along with the ships sent to rescue them, so much ice accumulated that no penguin chicks survived in the colony. So far this year, only two of the chicks remain. Now here is where a bit of a divergence occurs. I'm sure you can all find the headlines about the melting ice everywhere. Well, here are the facts. Back in 2012 through 2014, there was record high ice in Antarctica. It dropped to record lows in 2016, but has already jumped back up and is having the same late season surge. This seesawing back and forth will get more extreme much worse as the temperature and salinity cycles ham and egg off one another. Going to happen up north too, by the way, just takes a bit longer. An FYI about what swings things back and forth, the answer is El Nino, indeed. It ended the 20-year global warming pause, which I know some say didn't exist, but many even mainstream global warming experts wish that would just stop because it happened. It is what it is. I do wish they'd mentioned that it took the strongest El Nino on record, bigger than the 1998 event, in order to do all this and break the record high ice marks in Antarctica, but we're moving on. We are not thinning out like some have said down there. Models would say that they were, but when they sent the robot, they found it is very very thick. They also took a closer look at the one area of Antarctica that actually is melting and discovered the world's largest submarine volcano and significant other geothermal activity right underneath the anomalous melt. And since we saw yesterday that El Nino is over and we are tipping back the other way, it is time for the albedo effect to kick back in. And remember folks, the greatest swing in known physics of the natural world in macro scale albedo is ice versus ocean. One reflects almost all, one sucks almost all of it in. Too much ice is how you get a runaway ice age. All it has to do is creep up to low enough latitude and a reflection runaway takes over. Now folks, I'd like to leave you with a little Easter egg on climate change of other planets right now, just in the last few years. Our pollution is somehow getting all the way out there. And as we should be reminded, given the recent news that even Neptune is changing faster than Earth, I will quickly remind you that our Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up later today. It will be tonight, slightly delayed from usual. But right now, enjoy this blast from the past. I'll see you all in the morning. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. The climate is changing. There has been a warming trend since 1880. That humans are an input on the climate system and will have an effect on it. And that pollution is one of the worst things humans do to this planet. We need major improvements there. Now let's look at where we need to refocus and make adjustments to how we understand climate change. Perhaps the single most important problem in climate change is that the entire solar system is changing fast. And trust me, our pollution isn't making its way out there. Let's run through what's happened during the time of global warming. Venus's fastest winds have increased at least 33%, which dwarfs anything seen here on Earth. Imagine tornadoes that could reach 400 miles per hour, or if Category 6 hurricanes were happening on Earth. Venus is also changing its rotation speed, spinning slower now. Despite being reported by National Geographic, this story made almost no waves in the climate change discourse. Mars warmed faster during the time Earth was warming. You want to talk weather changes. How about the disappearance of something we've seen for centuries? 
Let's go ahead and make that a double, given that Red Jr. is growing and the Great Red Spot has begun to fade. Jupiter is also emitting strange radio frequencies. This is important. Saturn has a superstorm every 30 years at its perihelion. Its orbital time frame around the Sun is 30 years. Like clockwork, it comes and goes, but it just arrived 10 years early for the first time and was bigger than expected and lasted longer than expected. This would have been like that Category 6 hurricane hitting Florida on January 1st and lasting a whole month. Haven't seen anything close to that on Earth. Last but not least is Uranus. We actually hesitated on this one the last two years because its changes weren't exactly the type of climate change we were looking for, enhanced auroral activity. But then we learned of anomalous storm activity, which has been confirmed twice. The storms on Uranus are changing, and we just witnessed the brightest storm ever. Never seen anything like it. 